thank you guys for coming. This is a um, talk on large block sizes. We're at Samsung, and uh, this effort has been um, by us three, uh, myself, uh, Louis, uh, Pankaj, and Daniel Gomez at Samsung. We're part of a team called Ghost, a global open source team. Um, oops, that did not work. Let's see. All right. So the agenda will be to review the uh, effort. Uh, I get a sensing of what we can focus on now, given the hands that we were uh, were raised or not earlier. Uh, we're going to be covering the use cases for LBS. Um, this is on existing storage devices and also for future types of storage devices. Uh, we're going to be reviewing the plumbing and implementation and then the testing that we've done for this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. Technology. No, it doesn't. Yeah. All right. So in a nutshell, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about block size greater than page size. We use this in, as a short, you know, uh, acronym. So if you see that, that's what this means for those that are not familiar with this yet. Um, nope. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Can't be hard. All right. Thank you. So this is, we're reviving a 16 year old effort. And to give you some context here, the first effort started in 2007 by Christoph Lamenter. Um, he, however, had focused mostly on the page cache. Uh, it was uh, adding more complexity to the VM subsystem. Um, and there was no, unfortunately, no equivalent solution yet for uh, buffer heads with his implementation. Nick Pigeon then had worked on uh, this thing called FS block. Um, he had two series of patch, patches for that. Um, it was an alternative to buffer heads that didn't have the limitations for that buffer heads do have today. But unfortunately, the implementation was completely removing FS buffer.c file, and that's typically not how we do development. Um, we have a lot of file systems that use buffer heads, so it was really difficult to uh, support that. Um, through the years, we've had advances in APIs on file systems, which allow us to slowly move away from buffer heads. One of them has been IOMAP. Um, and then the biggest chunk of work also was through um, Folios, support by Matthew Wilcox. A key part of Folios is the multi-index support of XRA. For those that are not familiar with it, I highly recommend folks to look into that. Um, Thanks, man. Um, the common restriction for supporting large block sizes has been the, the tight coupling, tight historic coupling of the system page size to the page cache. Um, in, there's two contexts to talk about in this, these restrictions. One of them is the block device context. In the block device concept, context, you have the restriction of the logical block size being pegged to not be greater than page size. Same thing applies to the physical block size. Um, an example here is an NVMe driver. You have, when the driver is probing a device, you have the LBA format read, and that actually constructs and sets the logical block size for the block device. Um, for example, if you add a 16K LBA format, you will end up with a 16K logical block size. This is an example uh, of uh, where we're setting the capacity. Now, if you, today, if you actually run this with a larger uh, LBA format, you essentially end, end up essentially just disabling the device, setting the capacity to zero. If you try to lift that restriction today, you'll actually crash. So, however, I should note that bumping the LBA format is a bit radical. So perhaps not, that's not the way to support uh, large block sizes these days. In the file system context, um, it's about the block size of the file system, which is the minimum data block allocation unit in the file system. Um, we're working on XFS as a prime example for enabling large block sizes. How this ends up 
and being implemented for other file systems remains to be seen. And of course, we need people who actually are interested in this as well. Uh, without large block size support, to give you an example, for those that are not familiar with this, you can create file systems with large block size today. However, you can't mount them. The use case types, so we'll cover the existing use uh, storage devices and then the future type of technology, uh, which would allow new storage device experience to be a bit more optimal. Um, you can also work with Keymu today uh, if you want to experiment with this, uh, both with uh, LBA format changes and also with uh, NVMe hacks. An existing device use case would be this poor soul who posted something about six years ago where he ended up with the uh, uh, XFS 64K block size system where he can't actually access the data anymore because he can't get a 64K page size system. Um, another example would be if your workloads are focused on uh, large IOs. One example would be if you know that you're dealing with larger files than 16K. Um, large folios today are used uh, on the read ahead path in the write path without LPS support. You already get these large folios. This is a recent implementation that Matthew enabled. However, large block sizes will ensure that no small writes for inodes for data are ever issued. So one of the things that we've learned uh, through LSFMM and also just information in general about from database developers has been the desire to support large atomics. And one of these, the reasons and the rationale for this is essentially the database is already using as a default page size for their internal mechanisms, uh, larger than, than 4K. MySQL is an example where they're using 16K default for INODB engine. Um, another thing to consider are some databases don't have support for direct IO. MySQL today uses direct IO to circumvent the limitations uh, on buffered I.O. support in Linux for large block sizes. Uh, here's a quote that's actually very recent, only a few days ago, uh, November 9th, at the Open Source Summit in Spain by Jonathan Katz, where he said that direct I.O. is a long-term feature in the works. It will take years to implement. It is a complex solution, complex problem, sorry. Uh, this is for Postgres. So it seems that Postgres will take a while to pick up uh, direct I.O. support. LBS essentially enables support for Postgres to work with large block sizes. Um, damn. So an example for new device use cases would be high capacity SSDs. In SSDs, you have this concept of indirection unit. That's uh, an internal mapping to the device. And most indirection units today in SSDs have a mapping table or IU of 4K. Uh, high capacity SSDs are using large IUs to increase capacity and to in decrease DRAM costs. With these types of drives, when you align the writes to the IU, you get the best performance. Um, in the NVMe example case, you have different parameters. You know, these are, you have to be, I think, Danish to try to pronounce these. Um, no, something like that. Um, NPWG would be the parameter that you use uh, to align things to the IU. And you can take advantage of this optionally to also enable large atomics to help with databases. Um, LB, the LBA device, L, large block size devices then with 4K logical block size, but larger preferred write granularity and also atomic support uh, provides you to, to use LBS in an optimal way. And it's also backward compatible. So this is not jumping the LBA format. So LBS is not great for all workloads. If you're, for instance, working with smaller IOs, LBS can, can cause write amplification due to read modify writes. But if you do large writes on a 4K block size file system, it doesn't mean that all of the IOs are going to be issued in 4K as well. So if you look at the IOs, actually, you might see that actually they're actually pretty small. Um, so one of the things that we've learned is that the volume is what counts. So definitely be sure to uh, do your WAF homework and measure your IO. Um, and that will help you with uh, understanding whether or not you have WAF implicated in this. Um, LBS is suitable to storage large, large data that can, can be processed in larger IO chunks. 
And now I'll hand over to Pankaj, and we'll go over the plumbing. No, I, can, I got it. Uh, thank you, Louis. <clears throat> I hope everyone can hear me. So now I'm going to talk a bit about the, the whole plumbing aspect. Like I think Louis talked about the use cases and, and uh, why this is needed. But now let's uh, jump into uh, what is the limitation, where this limitation of block size is uh, coming from, from Linux and, and, uh, and, and possible solution. Um, just as a history, like one of the things that page cache was very, very closely tied to the pages, like the page size of the device historically. And, um, and why that's a problem is when, when a file system or a, or a, or a device wants to tra uh, track a, a bigger block sizes, they need to, uh, there was no way in, to tell to the page cache where you manage it as one unit. And if you can't manage it as one unit, then you can have partial eviction of, of uh, some drives and the, uh, some, some blocks, and then you have to read it back and which is not really optimal. And, and there was no way in, in page cache to, 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 to do it. And um, just as a quote from Billy, like, you know, why um, he says like, why we need large folios to support la uh, 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 large block sizes is because you need to man manage them as one unit. And uh, so, so if you want to track the dirtiness, you need to track them in, uh, as one chunk instead of like, you know, uh, individual pages. And, and that's sort of important uh, to know that the crux of the problem comes from the page cache and, and uh, why um, the file system of block device cache could not handle uh, large blocks. Uh, so this is how it always used to look before. Like, you know, you uh, whenever uh, you have a block device or, or a file system, when you try to allocate uh, a page to the page cache, then, then the minimum allocation unit was a page. Uh, but that all changed like in the past four or five years, once we introduced folios uh, into the picture and um, and uh, the uh, once we introduced uh, folios and large folios into, into the picture, like three or four years ago, uh, Billy actually added support to have large folios uh, like in, in, in the page cache itself. So when it's used is uh, during read ahead, like when you try to do a read ahead, it's gonna uh, like, and if the file system supports it, for example, XFS, Shimm, AFS, AeroFS supports them. So you, the file system has to opt in to say that it wants to use larger folios. Then the page cache will try to do uh, its best to uh, allocate a bigger folio when it's trying to do a read ahead. Uh, but since 6.6, .6, which is like pretty recently, uh, XFS uh, buffered writes also tries to use this mechanism where when when you send larger writes. Uh, IO map, uh, which XFS uses, tries to allocate larger folio to the right to the device, which is pretty nice. Uh, oh yeah, I also did the same mistake. <laughs> I shouldn't press the other. All right, got it. Okay, just as a, as an example, how it looks like, you know, uh, just imagine this is like uh, the page cache of an of an inode. So uh, at the moment, if you have a 4K, let's say you have a uh, a system with the 4K page size, you can have like multiple. Can you see the? Yeah, you can see the. the yeah, you can have multiple smaller pages uh, in in the page cache. But also, if the file system supports uh, large folios, then you can have like a contiguous range of entries that belongs to one folio, which is a large folio. So uh, yeah, for example, the if you have an offset at 16384, which is like uh, index four in 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 the in the page cache. From index four to index seven, it, it's all a part of the same folio. So it's a it's a larger large, larger physical allocation in the memory. And as Lewis mentioned before, this sort of like was enabled because of the XRA multi-index uh, support in in the page cache, which is pretty nice. And uh, so as I said before, like one folio sort of spans across multiple indices. And uh, and the the one limitation sort of is like the index must be aligned to the folio order. That's important. So, for example, you can't have a folio of order two with four pages at random offset. It needs to be aligned with the, with, for example, four aligns with order two, so you can you can have it over there. Boom. Uh, okay, to the next slide. So it's uh, so we started thinking like, what is missing in XFS because XFS supports large folios in the write path and, and the read path. So we started thinking, what is the what is the issue with you know supporting having this LBS support in XFS? So uh, the one piece that was missing, like when we were doing the research, we saw from Dave Chinner, uh, was oh yeah, like we need some mechanism for the file system to say that we need to allocate uh, at least file system block sized folios in the page cache. So uh, so 
I, I sort of paraphrased what, what he wrote over there. So the, the missing piece that, that, that we needed to support uh, LBS and XFS was to have some sort of mechanism to, to tell to the page cache that we need to have uh, a certain minimum order when we allocate a folio. Um, so what I mean by it is like, let's say this is the page cache. You have, whenever you try to uh, add a new folio to the page cache, you always allocate uh, order of like whatever the file system requested, which could be the file system block size. Uh, so the file system can set like a minimum order during it sets up the initial, uh, when it sets up the inode. Uh, and the page cache will make sure that it respects uh, that minimum order and always puts the folios in 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 uh, at least in minimum folio uh, minimum order of the uh, folio that the file system requested. I will sort of give more examples on how it looks like, but yeah, that's uh, that's the idea behind it. And uh, and typically, minimum order can correspond to the file system block size for the file system, or in case in the future we want to support. Uh, like you know, block devices with with uh, with larger LBA format, then block cache can also use the same thing because it still uses the same uh, pay, uh, page cache infrastructure, which is nice. So uh, yeah. So how does it look like if we have a page cache? Uh, let's assume it's a, it's a 4K uh, system, and if you if you have a minimum order of two, which means four pages, that's 16 kilobytes. So whenever uh, uh, whenever you allocate a folio in the page cache, we make sure that we allocate at least uh, a minimum order in, 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 the, in the page cache. And the, the point here is it's, it's the minimum order, the, the maximum could be higher, like, you know, uh, so we don't really, uh, like, pessimize the, the, the path where if you have a larger reach, you don't actually allocate smaller folios. So that's nice. Um, that was that. So, like, so LBS is a pretty loaded topic. There are a lot of things could be changed, but so we want to have uh, a tangible sort of uh, scope for this work, for the first phase of the work. So what we thought was, okay, we already have uh, the multi-index support in, in X-rays and uh, we sort of build on that. So that's what I mean by having a minimum order to the, to the page cache. So uh, we, we add that support to the, to the to, to the page cache and use and also enable XFS to have LBS support. Uh, so the, 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 the good part is like most of the heavy lifting has already been done by the community. So, uh, it was pretty surprising to, to get to 90% to how it works because like we had to change some things in the page cache, how it allocated things. And then we XFS sort of started to work. There were some corner cases that we need to fix, but at least most of the work has already done by the community, which is very nice. We sort of make use of that effort and, and build on top of it. Uh, and the best part is like FS test sort of like stresses the, the file system in a way. So the file system is going to stress a lot, the page cache. So we could actually test all the corner cases that, you know, like uh, of uh, which we found a lot of bugs while, while running uh, FS test on the implementation that we did. So which was nice to shake out all the bugs. It was having like we used as a test bit. So uh, I'll quickly go over the implementation part. All right, so uh, so how does it look like? It's a very simple API. Uh, like we uh, have a new API that that we're going to add to the to the uh, file map to the to the page cache, where you can set the minimum order and the maximum order you want for the page cache as a hint. Uh, yeah, once I explain more, I think it'll get clear. I think I can see Damien's face like squiggling like this. No, so I we'll... don't get the point about the max. Yeah, I, I'll get to it. Yeah, I'll get to it. So I know, uh, yeah. So um, I'll. Uh, so that's a good point. So at least for the first phase of the work, we are not touching the max. It was something really started with, like you know, at least for the fir first phase, we don't really care about the max. Like we only focus on the minimum part of it. Uh, the max is still set to max page cache order. So the 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 page cache is is okay with using the maximum. I don't know if there's use case for the maximum order. Like you know, we we will get to know if if it's there. But I'm not sure uh, as such directly. So, so what does API does? Like when you set the order, let's say the minimum order, we sort of encode that uh, as a part of the address space struct that's that's used uh, in the page cache, and we encode from uh, bit eight to bit eighteen. It's an implementation detail, but we sort of encode the the order. So the order can go from zero to thirty-two, uh, which is like you can store really large. Uh, if you want to go uh, really, you know, uh, you want to store huge pages, then you can do. Um, and yeah, that's that's the idea here. 
And uh, how does it look like from, let's say, XFS point of view? XFS, when it sets up an inode, it's going to set the minimum order and the maximum order it wants. Yes, uh, Damien, as you can see here, like for now, we're just setting as max page cache order. Let's see, like, if there's a use case for like capping it, but you know, I don't know. Uh, but but the point is here, we, the minimum order corresponds to the, uh, the file system block size. So uh, uh, that's pretty nice. And I also remember having a conversation with Derek, uh, uh, the ex XFS maintainer now. Uh, he sort of indicated that it might be nice to have some sort of hints where you can control uh, to have different order for different inodes. Like maybe there's some hint that you give from the from the from the uh, from the user space, but yeah, for now we sort of set the mean order to the file system block size. Yeah, question. maybe. So Matthew writes in the chat a few explanations. So uh, one thing is that uh, the there is advantage for max order, and that's because the file system, for example, due to efficiency, may want to limit the maximum size of the page cache. Like may, uh, like usually you need some additional data structures attached to the page, like for tracking file system metadata, and you may have limits on those, like to which extent they are efficient. Like for example, currently ext4, if it wanted to use this, it attaches a linked list of buffer heads, which yeah. are block size large, yeah. and you don't want this linked list to grow too large or it would okay. get really ineffective. Okay. So so that's that's one of the reasons why, why you may want to restrict the maximum order. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Makes sense. Uh... Yeah, but at least for the first scope that we're not adding the max support, but I think it will definitely come. Maybe that is a use case to it, so we, uh, we might uh, add that thing. Uh, all right, so some of the changes that we need to do to the page cache is like, okay, now uh, when we allocate a, a folio in the page cache, we need to align the folio uh, to the order, uh, to the minimum order that, that it was set, and, and we need to also make sure that the, the, the size of it is, is, is uh, minimum order. And yeah, there were a lot of bunch of places in the in the in the file map .c and read .c that that did this, and we had to go and change uh, the you know like the, to round down and and uh, it's it's uh, like it took some time to figure out where all to change uh, properly. Uh, but but the, the crux of it is this: like you need to when you add a folio, make sure you're aligned and at least minimum order uh, to the page cache. And uh, some of the changes that we had to do to the read ahead. So read ahead uh, like when it sort of moves or iterates through uh, uh, um, uh, an extent, let's say, then before it used to do one page at a time, but now we had to make sure that uh, it moves at least minimum order uh, of the folio at a time. We did run into some interesting cases where uh, like the truncate and read head had a lot of like interesting interactions. And uh, yeah, and, and it, result, it resulted in crashes. So we had to make sure that this is taken into account when you're doing the read ahead. Uh, when you're doing the read ahead as a part of it. Um, yes. So yeah, okay. So you are going to touch this. So maybe oh, I'll. No, if you want to go back, I can go back. No, 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 no. Uh, I wanted to ask exactly about. So, so if I remember right, like some of the page cache operations actually. What they did at least previously was that they have split the large order folios in the page cache into single pages so that some of the operations are simpler like truncate was one of the cases uh, but yeah yeah, yeah okay. i have so uh, like, actually i have the the thing covered okay <laughs> uh, exactly so thanks for the segue so uh, about truncate right so truncate was something that we had to chase a lot to to figure out to get it right um and and probably this is what you're also referring to the Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, actually so the splitting is work of Matthew. Yeah? I, I wrote the I wrote the thing before Matthew then took it and rewrote it for the large folios, but right. yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, like uh, at least for now what we do, so the, the the issue comes in is like when you have a truncate and the truncate sort of lies uh, partially in a folio, in a large folio, then we <sighs> sort of like split the folio into individual pages. And uh, and that sort of breaks the, the guarantee that we give to the to the page cache to have certain minimum order. So for now, the changes we did is like either you completely take out the folio or not, because we want to respect the minimum order. Uh, it's maybe it's a bit naive, like you know that's how it works uh, for now. But maybe we can we can change it later. And, and uh... yeah, so Matthew had just writes that there are now patches from Xian which allow the splitting of large order folio to happen not to the base pages but to arbitrary order pages okay so so then 
you can basically keep the current algorithm when like if you have partial folio then you just split it into the basic blocks and then then you use your algorithm to actually just either throw away the whole block or keep the partial oh, ones perfect. as we basically currently do with the pages as well yeah because nothing really forces you to truncate on the page boundary like right. we, we keep partial pages these days as well but that support is already added or it's going to come soon so it's like the pages uh, are existing currently apparently on the list like matthew writes that Zian has patches. Mike? Compaction patches? Yeah, yeah uh, okay. probably, probably. Okay. I'm not that, sure. That, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, this is the thing that, that we are doing right now in, in, as a part of Truncade. And, and uh, of course, to, it, it took some time to, to uh, uh, figure it out um, where exactly we need to do the changes for the Truncade. But yeah. Um, and, and one of the hidden surprises in IOMAP that, that I encountered, like, you know, in two weeks or three weeks back, I sent a pass as well, uh, was like, there are some hidden assumptions in, in IOMAP, you know, like, uh, where they sort of assume the page, like, the block size to be less than the page size. So, uh, so what was happening over here is, like, I was chasing a, a file system corruption where it was writing pages next to a zero page to the device. And then and sometimes it was it was zero, luckily, but sometimes it was, like, some random value. So, uh, but, but yeah, now I think I, I, we fixed the, fixed the issue, and, and, uh, and it looks like that's, that's the right approach to do it. Um, yeah, so apart from that, we also had different patches, but, you know, these are the main highlights that, that, that I want to highlight. Uh, yeah, so probably for this, you would need uh, to allocate a huge page instead, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so we are all having a discussion, you know, like, to have some sort of inf infrastructure where you have, like, uh, at boot time have some sort of, like, big folio of zeros, like, you know, or do you want to use the huge page? The only problem with having a huge page is, like, it can fail. Uh, so, so you have to have, have to like pre allocated zero to each page, but that okay. already exists, I believe. Like Dax was using this uh, because, for example, so so Dax, do you know Dax? Yeah. 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 So, so, so for Dax, uh, when you have like huge hole in a file, yeah, Dax has been supporting like direct mapping of huge pages into the page tables because that was one of the use cases for it. Uh, and when you had huge holes, then we were mapping like huge zero pages there already. Right. So, so th there is th there definitely does exist a huge zero page. Yeah. And you just have to be careful to use it enough. Yeah. I'll uh, look into it. Yeah, I think the discussion is ongoing. I, I also saw Christoph, he also wanted something like this for his work. So it looks like it's it's, a, it's like many people are trying to solve the problem by, right now I fixed the problem by trading through, you know, uh, like having multiple zero pages added to the to the bio to make sure that it's at least a file system block. But I mean, I think the, the better approach would be like you already have the ad folio, bio ad folio uh, interface. So why not have a bigger folio directly added to the, to the as a part of the bio? But um, yeah, but for now, I, like we do the iteration to add the zero page, but yeah, it works uh, and we, we can optimize it later. Uh, so with respect to testing, I'll, I'll cover the first part of the testing and then Lewis has like a lot of things to talk about testing part. Like the, the first one uh, I want to do was a, sort of like an IO distribution analysis with FAO to check, um, you know, it's more of a litmus test to see if LBS is doing what it's supposed to do uh, in terms of like sending a bigger blocks to the devices. Um, so what I did is uh, pretty uh, straightforward, like, um, uh, like I have FIO job with 64K IO blo uh, block size. It's doing a buffered IO. It creates a bunch of files. And uh, it writes to the it writes to multiple files, the like you know uh, to it, and and the size of the file in total is actually bigger than the the RAM I allocated to the VM, just so that it starts doing a write back and to see the splits and you know like to see how it performs. Um, I perp perp yeah, I'll I'll talk about the hardware a bit later, but but this is the idea. So we we made like a small tool uh, with um, with eBPF to trace the IOs that are going out of NVMe. Um, so you have the FS here and you have the NVMe driver and FAO does the FAO and we sort of measure like what is the IOs that are going to the device. And we put a probe to, to see, you know, what kind of IO distribution we get if we have the support. So for baseline, I had like a 4K uh, block size EXT4 with uh, big alloc. So uh, the cluster size 64K to match with FAO uh, block size. And XFS, uh, it's sort of the baseline to see XFS with 4K to see how would how AXT4 and X, XFS with uh, without our patches perform, and then and the last one is like XFS with whatever support we added and uh, and and setting the block size to be 64K on a 4K based system. Um, and uh, the setup, like 
I pur- as I said, I purposefully made a, a, a VM with a small uh, a RAM so that like once at some point it starts doing write back and, and to, to see what kind of IOs, uh, like are they being split or you know, uh, what's, what's happening. So these are like the preliminary results I got. So we have ext4, uh, XFS with the 4K block size and XFS with the 64K block size that, that we added. Um, how are we are doing on time? Okay, we have some time. Uh, so, uh, okay, I, I'll be a bit quick here. So, um, we like as you see, like Linux is already pretty good at, at sending larger IOs to to the device, and it's also an ideal test case. It's not like a real workload, to be honest. But 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 you can see that Linux is already pretty good at at sending la, like you know bigger IOs to the to the device. Uh, the block layer does plugging and make sure it merges the request, and it does a lot of nice fancy things. That's good, but to have to to like but the thing is but the point over here is like when once we want to have some sort of a guarantee from the device or the database to have like you know i want i don't want to have any splits happening below a certain block size then we need to sort of focus on uh, this area like what happens in that area right so when i focus so it's the same graph but i'm sort of focusing on 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 the uh, on the smaller part right and here you can see that uh, ext4 sends a lot of 4k writes and uh, XFS with, uh, with the 4K, actually it's pretty good, but you can see there's still a lot of splits that are happening. Uh, and then the, the final one you can't see, which is good, uh, is the, the support that we added and, and make sure there is no uh, IOs that are less than the block size. And that is, you can see that there is a small uh, IO that are still going to the, to the device from, from our patches. Uh, yeah, I looked. I tried to trace the process that's coming from. It's coming from the XFS uh, metadata rights, like where it does an asynchronous rights. Those are still 4Ks. I mean, uh, but the most of the data path is like 64K, so it's nice. Um, so now I'm going to give it to Lewis uh, about some more interesting benchmarks. So this is just your typical stuff that you guys might expect. Uh, obviously, benchmarks are you know pretty abstract and so forth. So things that people are used to are just building Linux. So this is all preliminary, and this is why the performance tests are really just limited at this point. This is We got this pretty much finished uh, a little while ago, so actually we've had only so much time to actually prepare with actual, you know, real tests. So this is all new, um, meaning that we, well, I, I guess I'll go get into this. So the, the stat, no, it's all right. Uh, well, is it just just put right? So basically, we just build Linux. Um, here's an example of run on a Xeon Gold server with 128 processors, one terabyte of memory. Uh, this is running perf uh, stat uh, four times, and pretty much you have parity. Um, this guy, right? Uh, here's another example uh, now running 100 times, running building Linux. On 16K, we actually see a better performance, but you know, again, I, I really do believe that's within noise, so I wouldn't consider this serious. Don't take this as like, oh, this is better. No. Um, here's another example. I figured I'd try to launch some AWS instances. Uh, here's the biggest server that I can find from AMD. I figured, hey, why not try to test with some of that P PTE coalescing stuff that they have, right? So it's a really huge server a uh, huge amount of RAM. Here's a uh, building with two runs. And I don't know why you can't actually see the PT coalescing on the AWS instance. So much for bare metal, huh? Yeah, here's another uh, AWS instance. This is a, a more moderate type of system. This is a 32 vCPUs, but again, there are vCPUs. Pretty much parity as well. Um, so we need more evaluation. So this is just very pre preliminary. Uh, here's the device matrix of what has to be considered when testing a device on different uh, block sizes uh, with different LBA formats. The stuff in blue are basically things that you can already, you know, work on today with today's technology storage devices if you want to work uh, with the, these patches. Uh, the stuff in orange or yellow, depending if you're colorblind, I don't know, um, are things that would um, you could actually run LBS on with larger LBA formats. You basically can do this with Kimu today. Uh, we have functionally tested, it's basically equivalent. The stuff in green is essentially what you can enable with a large 
uh, NPWG and NAWPF, so essentially the larger topic as well. Uh, uh, sir, there was just one more point. And the stuff in purple is stuff that would is not essentially supported today. Uh, that's basically in 64K sector size is not enabled today in XFS, uh, and that would require a format change. And talking to Jenner, it seems that perhaps that might be something welcomed in the future. But you know, for this, I think we should t leave this as a side thing for XFS buff. But yes, Damien? So the, the sector size in your table here, you're talking about the physical box size on the device? or We're talking about the MKFS-S size parameter, which basically just sets the block device cache. But then uh, what's the box size? The the block the, size uh, sorry, LB format, I understand. The other two, they are not the, clear. One of them what is, do they mean? One of them is the file system block size. The other one is the sector size that you set on the file system. And the, right now, the only reason that you would set the sector size to communicate to the block device cache, ca, uh, block device cache uh, what uh, block size to use for the block device cache. That's pretty much it. What? It's, yes. It's very, the sector size. Yes. It's I, actually. Yeah, you lost me. Well, let, let's talk Let's talk about in the hallway about this. Okay. But pretty much, I was talking to Chenner about this, and pretty much it's useless. Uh, we do have to work on some of these semantics because it's at this point in time that's kind of like what we're using it for it is the block size set for the uh, block device cache yeah but basically oh that yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes 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 it's yes, like yes, oh my god well, yes, why is this so jesus christ but practically every file system sets this to its file system block size yeah i'm, I'm sorry um, practically every file system sets the sector size to the file system block size yeah uh actually the logical block the, the sector size yeah they they set it to the logical block size typically yeah yes yes that's true that's true uh it yes so about your benchmarking i think you should also look at the amount of memory like the, the memory usage and the disk yeah i will usage. I, I will cover this Good. thank you <laughs> um so here's the example of consideration that you would have to take if you want to test XFS today. These are the profiles on the left that we define. And on the right, you see the new LBS profiles. The baseline profiles have come through an evolution in time. Um, and essentially, the latest update came from Chantan, who is now essentially working uh, as a release manager for XFS. He ended up extending the profiles that we have to basically cover, provide coverage that Derek wanted as well. So that's why you see some of these um, kind of odd ones there um, that I, I, I didn't know were possible. Um, so we're using KDOS for RFS test testing. To give you an idea, it takes you about 20 to 30 minutes to set up a test rig uh, to test all these baseline profiles only. You'll need about a four terabyte drive uh, to test all these profiles. You also need about four gigs per guest. That's about 80 gigs of RAM. So just have a set of RAM. Um, I, the more the better, basically. Um, we have not yet needed more memory for uh, testing large block size support. It's very, very interesting. We didn't expect that result. We were expecting a lot more. But granted, this is just running a Festus. It's not stress testing with performance or workloads. It's just running a Festus and making sure that we're not getting Eno mems or anything like that from um, you know the testing that we're doing. We had to pick a baseline to focus on ensuring that we're not regressing the kernel. So we essentially picked 6.6 .6 RC5 and just you know have stuck there for a while now. Um, our goal really is to get first the baseline to make, make sure that we're not, uh, you know, introducing regressions. Our objective then is to build, uh, sorry, to run a fast test in a loop a hundred times and to ensure that we're not seeing any new failures that will allow us to have high confidence that this is the baseline that we're working on. Uh, we're using a soak duration of 2.45 hours as well. Um, here's an example screenshot of what this looks like when you're running a fest test on, an on a big cluster with all these profiles running. Here's an example of a, a crash that happened. So when that happens, you have to SSH in, you know, do journal KC, journal CTL K, scrape the log, copy, paste this. Into, I, I basically use a gist, uh, a GitHub gist, and paste that there, and then just refer that into the expunges that we have. Um, 
you also see before I, I, mean, I forgot to mention the soak duration stuff when when a test is enabled with soak duration you will see those tests you know soaking as well um, the results for the baseline is what I'll cover first um, and essentially our the confidence in in the baseline at this point is 25 loops running at fast tests um, we essentially are putting all of the results also in the KDOPS uh, Git tree. So if you want to see any of the results of any of these runs, you can go and look at them. All failures are itemized as expunges. And we also have added a failure rate notation to indicate approximately how in how many loops you have to run the, the test to fail as well. Uh, these are known as flaky tests. At this point in time, we have 443 known failed tests, 43 crashes. Um, Here's an example set of crashes. The most common one is the assertion failure. Um, and that happens on XFS iFree for different reasons, for different tests. It is the most common failure that we have found a lot. Um, the second one is the, another assertion as well. Then we have a series of uh, hung tasks. I won't get into and bore you with the details with this. Five minutes? Great. Um, because we'll have an XFS buff where we can cover some of these things as well. So the, there's really crazy flaky stuff here, like mixing buffered iron and direct IO, in, insane you know, types of tests to run, right? Because this is just stupid, but we still have to support it. We do have crashes when this happens that I don't think have been reported before, but we will be reporting these. Um, the results for LBS so far, we have some odd, uh, I would call them, call them at this point test bugs, really, because we just have to enhance them because we they weren't considering large block sizes. One example here is a crazy one where we do the number of uh, XFS attributes that are injected with XFS DB based on the block size for large block sizes, N equals to this huge number here. It takes about 30 hours to run. It actually successfully completes, but that's just too long to take, so we have to reconsider that. I haven't gotten a feedback on the bug there. there. Um, some tests also need to be fixed for large block sizes. Um, but the good news is that we have found zero regression so far. The next steps are polishing the min order patches again, posting them. Um, the block device cache needs to be addressed as well because that's essentially what you user space interacts with when you're running FS disk or whatever and so forth. Um, I had posted patches before using dynamic AOPS. Chenner was very clear that he didn't really support that because we already learned through DAX experience that that's not actually ideal. So we have different alternatives. One of is uh, one of them is using IOMAP buffer head compatibility, as su suggested by Chenner as well. That requires a bit of work. Um, that doesn't work for me yet. Uh, buffer heads are the next target as well. If we get large folio. Uh, buffer head support, we essentially get the block device uh, fixed as well. Uh, other file system support also needs to be evaluated. At this point in time, I've only heard interest by GFS2 maintainer to also uh, help with uh, large folio support. NVMe, there's also some changes um, that are actually re relatively easy once you get the stuff upstream. We already have them implemented, so and we have tested them with larger LBA formats and Kimu. Um, concerns. Uh, I saw earlier there was in the chat talk about fragmentation in a way. So this is where I try to cover this. I had asked, um, yeah, so um, this is the thesis. Um, so it should be possible to test this thesis now. Um, I had asked for a simple memory fragmentation measurement and John Hubbard was kind enough to provide a simple algorithm. So we should basically now just go out and try to implement this, do measurements, and see whether or not the thesis here was uh, correct in the end. Uh, and even if it was incorrect, fortunately, we have the Young's patches who uh, try to uh, provide support. At this point in, in the slides, it was RFC, but last night I saw this is a, a new patch. They actually moved from RFC to patches for compaction for higher order folios. So there is already support, now, well, not, not support, Patches are already posted for large folios. Um, uh, if you're interested, we will have having uh, monthly meetings. The next one uh, was set at Japan time to accommodate some folks yeah. in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, my hope is that 
uh, some people that are in Japan will join us next time. Um, and then the next time, I, I suspect, we'll rotate to a European-friendly uh, time zone, then back to U.S. and then Japan and so forth. So just join us. We're also on Discord on the a large block uh, channel. Um, and lastly, questions. We probably have like one minute or <laughs> questions. Otherwise, just talk to us in the hallway. But this was a lot. You know, hopefully you guys have found this useful. Yeah, so, so maybe I have one quick question. If you could go back to the I.O. size distribution for the, uh, the FIO test, because what I'm really wondering about is that, so you have there, yeah, even the one before, yeah? Because so obviously we have these small I.O. sizes, yeah. so, so that's understandable. Could you go one more back? Like, yeah, so, so here, what is confusing me is that so the maximum I.O. size is 128 kilobytes, so that's the like maximum NVMe request size that's or whatever? A, I think I forgot to mention it. I put it here, the NVDS was 256K uh, for the NVMe that I was testing on. So uh, yeah, I, sorry, I forgot to mention about the, the NVDS of the device that, that we are dealing with. Uh, OK, yeah. but still, so, so we had practically no 256 requests, yeah, because uh, yeah. like for the write back, I would expect the block layer to be submitting basically BIOS that are several mm. megabytes large yeah, for, for this workload. It's a good point, yeah. Uh, and so, I so I... That's on QMU, right? Uh, it's on QMU, but past yeah. the, the uh, device is past the... Yeah, but I, I think you, you get like a super crappy uh, mm. number of segments and you can't really... Ah, okay. The, yeah, the, yeah. the BIOS max size is small. Okay, yeah, that explains I, I think the 128K is actually what you get with QMU. Is yeah, this, okay, so, so that, it's that really is improvement. QMU limitation. <laughs> yeah, because I was really surprised because the write back layer will, will be submitting like basically megabyte large or several megabytes large BIOS, which then must be getting split somewhere by the yeah. block layer or the NVMe driver, basically for the constraints. As yeah. Well. Yeah, like, but this is not a benchmark per se. It's more like counting the IOs, like how the, the things are. But I, I, I get, I get your point. Like, it's still, it was still like sometimes we did some get occasional crashes, so I was a bit scared to like, you know, it was the machine. I, I didn't have too much time to, you know, like put the file system and see if something um, like so. But, but the, the point is like I tried to do a pass through of the NVMe. So anyway, <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out of time. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.